Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing some very important and very exciting things in the world of jailbreaking. Be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up if you're excited about the prospect of the first public usable iOS 10 jailbreak and also thumbs up because I'm still giving away a pair of Apple AirPods. If you have yet to enter, definitely check it out. I will have a link to full instructions in your cards as well as down below in the description. That giveaway is going to conclude very soon. Now let's just go ahead and get straight into it. First of all, if you have yet to watch my previous video on the topic, definitely go to it. It is technically considered part two of this three part series or what is currently three parts with the release of this video, but really all I do recommend watching or all you absolutely have to watch to understand what we're going to be talking about today is the second part, which will be the first link down below in the description and it will also be in your cards right now. Definitely watch through it because in today's video, I'm going to be operating under the assumption that you already have a grasp of the knowledge discussed in said video. Okay, so now that 3.3c3 kicked off yesterday, when can we expect the gamma release of the iOS 10.1.1 jailbreak that Luca previously teased on Twitter? Well, unfortunately, he tweeted this out the other day, quote, note that I forgot to copy my code over on my MacBook, so the actual jailbreak thing is probably delayed, lol. Now, this isn't all bad news because in a follow-up, he said, quote, note that I do have a jailbroken device with me so I can work on actually fixing the bugs, just no releases. And this is actually probably better news because what this hopefully means is that when we finally do get the gamma release, it will be even more stable in light of this because hopefully now he's going to have more time dedicated to fixing specific bugs rather than also having to allocate time into finishing up the gamma release. So he's gonna have more time to focus focus on bug fixes, presumably. At least that's what logic seems to back in this case. So guys, this is some really awesome news. I for one am super excited to see what this gamma jailbreak actually brings to the table because as of now, the jailbreak for iOS 10 has been designated as a beta and for very good reason. It's not fully stable and it could potentially jeopardize your future ability to jailbreak. That's what so many people are actually missing. Even though, yeah, you may be able to jailbreak and it may appear as though it is stable once jailbroken in the long term, it could very well jeopardize your ability to maintain your jailbreak. Like I said in the last video, what would be better? Being able to have a jailbreak for just one to two weeks and then being forced into restoring to a firmware that's not jailbreakable or just waiting a couple of weeks and having a jailbreak for significantly longer. I mean, that's a question that only you guys can really answer. And the good news is that at least Luca is enjoying 3.3c3 as this tweet would seem to indicate. Again, he said, quote, 3.3c3 is truly the best conference. So in addition to having a quick little break from working on the gamma jailbreak and fixing bugs, at least he's enjoying himself. Also, note that the beta has actually escalated from beta one to beta four, but that doesn't mean that you should actually install it. In fact, there are significant issues with the fourth beta, and he even says so on the release page for the utility. You can see here that for the mirror, for the fourth beta, he says that it is broken, and again, this could cause significant complications, and he recommends that individuals specifically those who are jailbreaking for testing purposes, utilize the third beta. So guys, that's what's what as far as the current release is concerned. But again, as I mentioned, all of you guys should definitely avoid this jailbreak. It is intended for developers only as Luca and Sorik have both confirmed and reiterated a number of times. So to provide a quick summary of the current situation, yes, there is an iOS 10.1.1 jailbreak. As stated in the last video, it is currently very limited. But I'm going to say this, there will be a time when an iOS 10.1.1 jailbreak is very usable by the public and when I recommend that you guys should jailbreak. Whether or not that's the gamma release still has yet to be seen, but of course I will let you guys know and I'll make a decision once I see it and once I get to test it. So be sure to click that subscribe button below next to my channel name if you have yet to. I'm going to keep you guys fully updated every step of the way. Either way though, we will get an iOS 10 jailbreak as I've been telling you guys from the beginning now and at least we did get some good warning in advance that we needed to be on iOS 10.1.1. But what about those of us on iOS 10.2 plus? Because currently to actually use the AirPods, I am on iOS 10.2.x. 
Well, that's a great question, and that's what I'm going to be talking about right now, because iOS 10.2 Plus is definitely the future, and I haven't discussed this yet on the channel, but I saw it when it was actually breaking, and I didn't really make the firm decision to share it with you guys until now, because it is definitely still a possibility. So Stefan Esser, aka Ionic, definitely a reputable source in the jailbreak community. However, he has been known to kind of troll us in the past, said on Twitter a few days ago, quote, in the end, the iOS 10.1.1 signing window closing is not such a big deal, considering that the iOS 10.2 jailbreak is about to hit soon. Now again, as I mentioned, this was a few days ago, a week now at this point, Point, and it's unclear whether he was trolling, but he does have deep connections in the world of jailbreaking, and as I've been telling you guys for a while now, Pangu has had their sights set on iOS 10.2.x, the timing just hasn't been ideal, and we likely anticipate that they are now targeting iOS 10.2.1, which won't see a public release this week in light of the holidays, but we could hopefully see an iOS 10.2.1 public release next week, in which case that could be the perfect opportunity for Pangu Pangu to drop a new jailbreak, but as I said, like with the iOS 10.1.1 jailbreak and its development, just be sure to stay tuned. I'll keep you updated every step of the way. And in a quick follow-up, Stefan said on Twitter, quote, kitties still bother me regarding the iOS 10.2 jailbreak. That is exactly why the team working on it doesn't disclose this. And that's what I've told you guys from the beginning. Official jailbreak developers, we're not talking about Luca right now, never announce what they're working on. So for instance, Pangu Pangu, Taiji, the jailbreak teams of old, including the Evaders and even the iPhone dev team, never give announcements. They just release utilities. They don't tell you what they're working on or give ETAs. They always operate in stealth mode just until the perfect opportunity to strike and release a utility. And of course, they surprise us every year. This pattern repeats itself and it will continue to moving forward into the future. So if you're locked out of iOS 10.1.1 and you can't jailbreak, there may be very good news for you to come in the very near future. Hopefully we'll get an iOS 10.2.1 jailbreak. We just don't know yet though, but that's the word on the street and that's likely what Pangu is targeting. So very good news on that front. Be sure to stay tuned, like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter for even more frequent updates. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.